the timer? Then let's begin. If your teacher had to die, August ain't a bad time of year for it. Ah, oh, it was like a miracle. <laughs> Though she must have been 40. It was no doubt Miss Mert was past her prime. She was hard of hearing, no doubt deafened by her own screaming, and she couldn't whoop us like she wanted to. She was a southpaw for whooping, and she had arthritis in that elbow. So even though she could still whoop, it didn't make much of an impression. <laughs> and when it comes down to it, if you can't hear and you can't whoop, you're better off dead than teaching. In the teacher's funeral by Newbery Award-winning author Richard Peck, young Russell Covert grieves the loss of his beloved teacher. Oh, wait, not really. Much like <laughs> many of people today, Russell doesn't quite appreciate the opportunity to better himself through study. But as he and you will find out, what he thinks to be the good fortune in the death of his teacher may turn out to be his worst nightmare. Dun dun dun. The teacher's funeral by Richard Peck. My dad was on the school board. I had encouraged him to shut down the school and drop all formal education out of Park County, but he was deaf to reason. Tansy, my big sister, great and big, loomed over my lap. There was no arthritis in her elbow. <laughs> Tansy, Will they have a funeral for Miss Mert? Of course they'll have dinner for her! What do you think they're gonna do? Just feed her to the house? Well, normal people have funerals, but Miss Mert was a teacher. <laughs> They'll turn out for her. They better, cause she's liable to sit up in her coffin and take roll. <laughs> there was one day before the funeral. That's about as you could long that's about as long as you could wait for it in this weather. Oh, you talk about hot. They don't make August like that anymore. A young horsey <laughs> from just over in Putnam County died and went down to Hades. And he sent back for a blanket. <laughs> That's the kind of weather we were used to. Baz Ellenhagen, who hadn't made it through the first reader under Miss Merck, was the grave digger. <laughs> and as Baz put it himself, there's never a grave I enjoy digging more. But the day wasn't to be pure pleasure. Far from it. We had to wear shoes and clean under drawers to the funeral. <laughs> shoes on a weekday. <laughs> under drawers in August. <laughs> Finally, the coffin stood open before us. It was no doubt Miss Merck Arbuckle lad out within. She had the longest nose in North America. Even the sunshine is somber today, brothers and sisters. We see Miss Mert Arbuckle on her final journey as she swaps semesters for eternity. She spent her 22 years a foreigner in our midst as she came up from Crawfordsville. She was an old maiden teacher, so you couldn't call her a full member of our community. But we done the best by her we could. Oh yes, we built the Hominy Ridge School, a modern structure for her comfort and convenience, all with volunteer labor. But who in this particular house of the Lord recollect the old schoolhouse that Hominy Ridge replaced? Who remembers this young children bring moss and branches every frigid morning in vain attempts to stuff them cracks in them everlasting logs like in winters we don't have anymore? And who remembers when children wanted to learn? Who remembers when children were happy to learn? And who remembers when children were eager to learn? I began to see how we operated. No one would miss Miss Mert, so the preacher got them to miss the good old days, when the winters were worse and the children were better. At a funeral, you want to miss something. And who remembers that young woman come upon us at that time? She was plain. That's about all you could say. She was all wool and no embroidery. She was a great big woman. And look now upon that wretched husk of a woman today. Look upon all that remains of her remains. What brought her to this? She done the best she could, so what cut her up in her prime? 
Doc Wilkinson tells me her poor heart just gave out, and that's the scientific diagnosis. But who's to blame? We are a people of party. We need someone to blame. Without blame, there is no shame. I ask you one more time. Who sent Miss Burke from here to hereafter? That's right, mothers and fathers. Hear your hearts. Instead of great children of this modern age, you put Miss Mert down like a lame horse. Children ruined by ease, the ungrateful, the unruly, they are the authors of this woe. I can't go on in the face of this injustice. The old at the mercy of the young, old parents take it out on their hands tonight. Rain them in before they strike again. Finally, my cough, my pu my pew stood over the coffin. They hadn't been able to brush all the chalk dust off Miss Mert's dress, so she looked natural. <laughs> Someone had even stuffed a great book in her breast pocket. <laughs> oh, for pity's sake, who put that pointer in her hand? They aren't going to put that in the ground. It's worth plenty of money, and there's plenty of use for it. You talk about an evil omen. That moment had trouble written all over it. That night, the school board met at my house for an emergency meeting. They had to decide what to do now that Miss Mert was in the ground. I had begun to fall asleep when, all of a sudden, I heard another voice. Higher pitched, beating me. Tansy! It took me a second, and then I had goosebumps all over like someone had trod on my grave. I envisioned Tansy with Miss Bird's corner on her hand somewhere in my head. She slapped him up, and the truth dawned upon me. In their wisdom, the school would hire Tansy to take Miss Bird's place. They wanted to pay for a real teacher. They could get Tansy for only 35 bucks a month, because she still had a year of school left. And the school board dearly loved a good bargain. But seem to me, if you just lock up the school and threw the key down a well, you'd save some real money if you was all a service. <laughs> but the school board was dead to reason. Why do you even want to be a teacher? It doesn't seem like good, honest work to me. You'll fam, and you'll have plenty of reason to miss Miss Mert. <sighs> what do you even know? More than you. The next morning, Dad took Tansy to school in the wagon. I hoofed it. Catch me showing up to school alongside the teacher. Good morning, pupils. Hey, Tansy. <laughs> That's Miss Tansy to you. <laughs> I was to be condemned to eternal perdition if I was going to call my own sister. Miss Tansy! Tansy loomed large on the rostrum. It seemed to bow beneath her. Although <laughs> she wouldn't have welcomed that to me, I admit she cut a teacher's figure. She was sure big enough to be a teacher. Her hair was up, and that made her woman right then and there. She was strictly business. There was no arthritis in her elbow. <laughs> in her same hand was the pointer that she dragged from the death grip of Miss Mert. The pointer had passed. Thank you.